this is just, you know what, fuck it. Hello. <laughs> ah! For the little kid in the back. All right, here we go. <laughs> There's no better way to explain my family than like anyone else's. Except for my father, who raised me on crying is for girls and never let anyone beat you. And a mother who found enlisting in Marine Corps made life easier to adjust to than a five-year-old with the chicken pox. An older sister I've seen four times I haven't spoken to since I ran into her on 42nd Street in line for Godzilla in 1985. And another sister raised in Puerto Rico to the echoes of, why couldn't your hair be more like your mother's? And in Vogue, yeah, they're pretty for some black girls. So I remained an only child in a house of cards awaited to be crushed by or paper cut to a slow death with. The fear of living in a house of cards is knowing the right gust of wind can paper cut you to death. When I was a kid, I wanted to be Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe. Black and cool as shit. Until I learned about my Uncle Pete, who died in Vietnam after the ammunition truck he was riding in, exploded my grandmother's emotions all over her house. When I was six, she made me promise her I'd never join the military. She says this country has never done anything for black men worth giving their lives for, and I agree. Then the Marines took my mother. So could you blame me for not trusting this country? Was confiscated a piece of my life without any of my help. How does a six-year-old rationalize his mother, leaving me at home to travel the world? At first, I thought it was cool. My mom was gonna be like Jinx or Lady J or Scarlet and G.I. Joe, only she was Puerto Rican and didn't know how to cook and couldn't be seen every day on TV. Then I grew up and relationships changed. My father, I wanna tell him I miss him and love him more than anything in the world, but I'm scared I have nothing else left to say. A fear felt since I left for a seed with no seasons, a sign of the time frozen, but skipped over, hoping their ways is just accepting things for how they are. Harder than the routine of hardships growing up, Sometimes the relationships between a father and son is lost when words that used to bond just become words used to bond. He says he's sorry for everything, and I could hear it in his voice, a shame acknowledged by the lack of eye contact. I could cry if I knew I'd feel better afterwards like the day I saw my father cry for the first time. See, all Subaru has weaknesses, carefully camouflaged as idiosyncrasies, and the only superhero I knew may do it no job, and a love for the only child he raised, whose strengths would soon to come to the after effects of Vietnam's residue. I realize how hurt we've been by inability to vocalize feelings not dealt with, like surprises known once, harbored emotions kept at bay. I tell my kids the same thing my father told me. Never forget how much daddy loves you, okay? You know I love you more than anything in the world, right? almost trying to convince myself that they understand. The guilt away for too long a period of time makes his presence felt, an uncomfortable sleep habits, lack of eye contact, and the gray hairs begin to decorate the sides of my head. I want my kids to have the relationship with my parents I had with my grandmother, the only woman I truly had fear of until I met my wife. She helped raise me with every spare emotion she could offer. She was my best friend. I wish my daughter grew up to be just like. I guess she was the mother I needed, with my mother not there. See, my mother was a DJ. She cut in and out of my life, a celebrity of sorts, seen on special occasion, the hottest ticket in town. I never had tickets to go see. Annoyingly, she transposed my growth. I want to hug her like I mean it. But I'm scared Al found comfort in his emptiness. Glad for the party she got started, but th left feeling punch drunk by my fear of abandonment. Sometimes I start fights with my wife for no reason or for the intimacy found in the afterwards. Confused but still comfortable, always willing to apologize. A life filled with too many hollow apologies. How selfish I've been. One day, my wife will tell me how I used to be. And I'll act like I didn't know it was like that. Like baby stories your parents tell your friends. I then apologized to her for everything I've done, and she better ever tell by the look in my eyes. See, I was never taught about the feelings of others, or how delicate they are, or how easily a heart can be broken with the right words. I wish I could reach inside of her mind and have all of her questions answered. But back to my mother. She thinks my scars have been healed by the little addressing they've been given. I never realized how, me, how much emotion had been put to the side until I tried to explain it like a stack of poems never finished or the closing of a chapter not read. My feelings are all cliche. I have no original reactions left, holding tears by the napkins, dotting my eyes, crossing my tears, making sure I get each emotion right. My grandmother recently called to tell me next time I come over, we need to talk, and it finally hits me. At 94 years old, she's been around forever, but she's not going to live forever. She wants to let me know what's going to happen when she passes, and I don't want to think about the future, but I anticipate its destruction. See, in all my years on this planet, I've never witnessed someone in a box lowered into the ground and then dedicated to the sky. So when I die, I want to be cremated. 
burning up all of my imperfections and to have someone sprinkle what's left over over some place I've never been to in hopes of inspiring someone I will never know anything about.